Welcome to What's Sold, the channel where we just talk about the things that we sold on eBay. We'll tell you what we paid, what we sold it for, and a little bit more than that. Let's check it out. First thing up today is this um, little bracelet. And you can see it's got freshwater pearls in it and it has a little um, kind of a heart-shaped charm. Um, I'll kind of roll through here and you see it. You can see it says 925 on the back, so clearly sterling silver. And uh, there's definitely some abrasions and some wear on the pearls, um, but that's what happens when you have a piece that's, you know, uh, on, a, on a wrist, so you get, uh, a lot of uh, things that can brush up against and whatever. Um, and you know, pearls, they just, they're natural substances, so they degrade over time. But this is something I paid $3 for at a, at a thrift store among costume jewelry they didn't know it was sterling silver and uh, sold it for uh, a little over $42. This next piece was also in costume jewelry. However, it's older than a lot of uh, other pieces. This piece is um, like a Czech piece. Um, these beads, these green beads are made of glass. And so they were made in the Czech Republic. The pendant is quite pretty. Um, as you can see on the front, lots of green rhinestones. Um, the back of it has an in interesting kind of look you know, like this. And this is sort of indicative of pieces that I come across that are Czech um, pendants and brooches and stuff like that. Uh, this came in a lot of costume jewelry. I've already made all my money back on it. So this really, I was nothing into this when I sold it for $50. This is a, a bag of these little, uh, they call them Infin Disney Infinity. Uh, they're little action, they're kind of not, uh, kind of like action figures, but they're really made for use in like a type of a game. But this is all kinds of things like Disney characters, Pixar characters, which is owned by Disney. Um, you can see we've got various figures from different movies and different um, shows. We've even got some Marvel related characters here. Uh, I paid $30. Uh, no, I paid $20 for the bag, and uh, I took a best offer of $60 for it. This is just a little pocket watch chain. It's older, but it's not gold or silver, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I buy these every time I see them for 2 or $3, because I know I can make uh, a sale of $20 or more, and this was no different. Sold for $22. This was a very cool piece. Uh, good size, as you can see, holding it in my hand uh, right here. <clears throat> Quite heavy. It's a bronze. It was, um, you know, kind of like a, a woman, like a mother holding a child, like she's reading a book uh, to uh, the kid. Really cool. I mean, worn, but it is definitely a vintage piece. And uh, as you can tell underneath, and you kind of have this really old um, nut and screw set up. I took a best offer. I, I paid $30 for it at an estate sale. I took a best offer uh, of 95 after it had been up um, for you know, a few weeks with no bites at that higher price. So when someone expressed interest, I went ahead and sold it. This was uh, a bunch of beads <clears throat> that came from an estate sale where I bought probably, oh, I don't know, maybe 15 trays um, of, of this kind of jewelry, uh, making supplies and beads and stuff. And these were all sorted. They were uh, all glass. Um, various colors, swirls, different patterns. Some of them had like little little bumps and stuff kind of on the outside of them. But this is perfect for people who like to make jewelry. Um, I already, the very first lot I sold, I sold for $150. This one I sold for $75. I sold another one of an equivalent size for $75. And I only paid $50 for all of them. So um, I already had my money back and was in profit on the last two sales. And so this is $75 um, I had no cost in. <clears throat> now this was a really fun uh, sale, uh, exciting. It took two weeks to sell on Facebook Marketplace, and I don't do this very often, but I source all kinds of places. Um, I'm leery of buying things online that I haven't held in my hand and looked at, but this lot looked good enough and I thought it was worth the risk. I bought six pocket watches for $500. Uh, four of those watches had key, uh, had, had chains and fobs on them, so um, this was one that came in the lot. Um, as I went through them, I found that many of them had gold filled uh, cases. However, one pocket watch, this particular one, um, and one of the chains ended up being solid 10 karat gold. Uh, and this weighed quite a bit. Um, so, you know, it was probably worth about $1,010 just in, in scrap gold weight. 
um, but with the movement and everything inside of it, which if I can if I can go through here so you can see it's etched beautifully on the outside. This is what they would call a double hunter because it is etched on both sides on the uh, on front, back, and on the side. It was missing the crystal, uh, which is the glass portion on top of it. So unfortunately. Uh, a little bit of condition issues there on the face too, but it was a, a decent, it was an 1892 uh, movement, Waltham brand. Put up for $16.99, very quickly had someone say, would I accept $1,500? And I said yes. So this sold within two weeks for $1,500. I, I, you'll see later in the video, I sold the other five pocket watches for $500. So I got all my money back with that sale. I sold this one for um, $1,500, and then I sold one of the chains, the gold one, for $1,200. So this um, one uh, investment yielded about $2,700 in profit. You need to learn how to inspect cases to tell whether or not they are made of silver or gold or are gold-filled. And, uh, and we talk about that on some of our uh, uh, videos on the Rusty the Reseller channel. And also on our podcast, which is called the What Sold Podcast, you can listen to the podcast or you can see the YouTube channel, What Sold Podcast YouTube channel. We have here a really nice tool. This is a hand plane or planer. It's a vintage one. It's got uh, a double handle, which is pretty cool there. Wooden handles. This is a Stanley brand, number 12. That makes it easy to research. These are selling in the... 100 and you know 100 to 150 dollar range i had it up at the top 150 slowly lowered it over time and ended up selling it this came in a lot of about 100 tools that i bought at an estate sale uh, about a month and a half ago two months ago uh, a lot of them have sold i'm well into profit at this point so i had no cost anymore if i were to buy something like this on its own i'd probably spend as much as 40 or 50 dollars knowing that i could sell it for 100 to 150. We uh, got in a very large lot of vintage and antique keys. We had at the same um, tool kind of lot that I, uh, I bought um, came a little tool chest, like a travel hand tool chest, and that was entirely full of keys. Loose keys, little key chains with various keys, vehicle keys, lock keys, safety deposit box keys, uh, skeleton keys, everything you can think of. Keys to wind old clocks. Um, this is probably one like that because it's a hollow barreled um, you know, key. If it had been really small, I would have thought maybe it went to a pocket watch, but something of this size, and I guess I didn't show the end, but it's hollow inside of here. It's made, looks like it's made of solid copper. Um, really cool. Uh, I paid uh, only about $10 for all those keys, and here we are. One sale, $12.95 for one key. Got all my money back, and all these other ones can sell over time, and I don't have to worry about the fact that I'm floating um, any money. This came in a, a tub of tools. I paid $20 for the tub, and in the tub were several toys, a lot of loose things, but also ones that are packaged and hadn't been opened. And this was an example of ones that had been uh, not opened. They were these tiny little like micro machine, if you recall those from like the 90s, the 80s and the 90s. They started redoing some of those. And uh, in this instead of cars, in this case, it's like a miniature G.I. Joe's. And it looks like they're in their little cases. Uh, you can open up the back and pull them out. Um, but they were still sealed, as you can see. Uh, $13.50 for these. So I'm already, you know, 60-70% of my money back. And I had probably 50 or 60 toys um, in this lot. So I've already sold a couple of other ones already uh, and have my money back. So this was just straight profit. <clears throat> This was an exciting sale. Um, uh, I'm not as excited today as I was when this actually sold, but what you're looking at is a, a piece of, of jewelry which came in uh, a, a lot of stuff I bought out of, a, um, out of an antique uh, sta uh, store sort of buyout. And it came with a bunch of fine jewelry and costume jewelry. It's a beautiful piece. It's, uh, I would date this somewhere in the very late 1800s to early 1900s, but probably pre-1920. It's definitely considered like a Victorian era piece of jewelry. It's, um, it's 14 karat gold. It is a brooch. It's a pin. It has a little pin on the back. If we can get to that, the back portion, you can see it. You see the color and the intensity of that uh, stone. It's gorgeous. Um, you can see kind of the, uh, almost like the Omega symbol on the back there. Um, this is the back. It's not marked. It doesn't say that it's 14 karat gold, but testing confirmed that it's solid 14 karat gold. And the stone, if I can come back to the front here, is maybe a 12 
carat, some like a 10 to 12 carat sapphire, blue sapphire. And then it has what they would call a halo of seed pearls um, around that. Uh, you can see a couple of posts here where a couple of the pearls have, have fallen off or, or come dislodged and, and have been lost. So it's not complete, um, but uh, I did verify this was a sapphire. So I put it up for sale uh, much higher than this. When I lowered it down, I got some interest and then it sold. Um, 24, 24, I was very happy about that. However, as things happen sometimes with higher valued items or items that maybe I'm missing a crucial piece of information, uh, yesterday the, uh, the buyer asked to return the item, citing that the sapphire, which is a blue sapphire, they said they believed that it was a lab created stone, which does not have nearly have anything close to the value of a natural sapphire. They may be right, they may not be, I'm not exactly sure. There'll be further testing I need to do. I don't have a way of doing that here at the warehouse, um, so I'll have to take it someplace. So this is coming back to us. We will resell it. We will sell it for several hundred dollars, even though it's a, it's a, it, even if it is a synthetic sapphire, because it is a vintage piece, it is a beautiful piece, it's wearable, and somebody uh, will probably buy this not caring that it's a, a synthetic stone. They would want it because it is, in fact, an antique piece. It's over 100 years old, for sure. Um, so we're waiting for that to come back. That happens sometimes. We have a, uh, a um, like basically no questions asked, 30-day return policy for our store. So if someone sends something back, um, we just have to accept it. Here is that chain I told you about that came in connected to one of the pocket watches. Um, I won't get into the whole story, but basically this chain was actually, um, the, one of the links was unlinked and it was attached to the top of a pocket watch as if it was a pocket watch chain. But as I did some inspection, I realized that it was not intended to be a pocket watch chain. It was just a necklace. It was a chain uh, that had wasn't supposed to have a clasp at all. It was just supposed to be connected. But uh, testing confirmed it was made out of uh, um, 10 karat solid gold and it was about 40 grams. So quite heavy. Um, somebody offered, um, well, no, they didn't offer. This was bid up to $1,205. So this was a part of that $2,700, um, you know, uh, amount that we earned our profit off of that pocket watch purchase. Uh, had a few pieces of, so of solid gold, 14 karat gold um, jewelry here. I had a necklace with a pendant that just I couldn't get the price I wanted to sell. And then a bracelet that's definitely out of style. Um, 25.3 grams of 14 karat gold. Um, actually, it's actually 26.98 because I actually added something else on it. But anyhow, um, got uh, almost $1,200 for that as well. We had something like, <laughs> we've had something like $8,000 in sales in the last four or five days, which if I knew that was going to continue, I'd be super excited. But as I've told you, you can sell things and then they get sent right back. Um, maybe next month we're not going to sell a whole lot. And so this extra money now, you just need to save for everything comes out in the wash. It might end up being a better than average month, but next month might be below average. And so we just have to plan for all of those things. This was a bag of gold filled jewelry. So it's not solid gold, but it did have um, a solid gold um, layer on the outside of the jewelry. People buy this stuff for a variety of reasons. They collect it or they are going to actually put it in some sort of acid and harvest um, the gold content and then they'll sell that off as scrap. This uh, is the lot of the pocket watches. So um, <clears throat> I said six before, but I think I meant to say seven uh, because these were the six that I sold um, and that seventh one was the one that was gold, solid gold. So here you see some beautiful pieces. Um, several of these, this one, this one, this one, and that one were all gold filled. You can kind of tell by the color. Um, this was also gold filled, but it was white gold, 10 karat white gold filled. And then this one on the upper right had been gold filled at one time, but was so heavily worn on the back that I didn't even really mention that that had much gold content. But Sometimes people buy these to re, uh, you know, fix the movements and make them workable. Sometimes they want the movement and they don't want the case. So they'll remove the movement, put it in a new case. Sometimes they just want the cases to, for scrap gold. There's a variety of, of reasons. But the point is I put this up on auction one bid, $500. It's fine because I got all my money back and then I made my profit off of the other two pieces. This was a very cool antique, uh, like, you know, I say brass, I guess it's brass, brass or copper um, 
lock that had this eagle on it. Really cool uh, looking type of a lock. It didn't have the key, unfortunately, with it. Um, but people can, people who know this kind of stuff can still open them, pick locks, or maybe they have a key that will go to it. Um, I was happy with this because this came with that little, little um, uh, toolbox that had all the keys in it. Not only did it have keys, it had about 12 vintage and antique locks. And so this lock, I took a best offer of $30 on. I was happy because I'd already made all my money back from that purchase. Bought this at a <clears throat> Goodwill for $8.00. And it is a piece of Fenton glass. Um, it's like a pinkish color, almost like a swung vase a little bit at the top, um, but it has a, a flat base. Um, kind of got that milky white. It's not exactly a hobnail with the bumps, though it does incorporate some of that, which is customary for Fenton types of uh, glass pieces. Uh, again, was happy to get $50. Um, I don't usually like to, to buy and ship big pieces of ceramic or glass, but at times, um, I will do it. Held on to this uh, next piece longer than I expected. Um, I paid $12 for it um, at, at you know, a thrift store, I believe. And it was just a necklace and earring pair of this kind of brushed gold, or like this kind of um, ornate gold motif here with these glued-in rhinestones. But it's a Kenneth J. Lane um, for Avon. So Kenneth J. Lane being kind of a medium-level uh, boutique costume uh, jewelry manufacturer and Avon of course being a jewelry company as well but this I guess was some sort of business arrangement where KJ uh, Kenneth J. Lane made this for Avon it was stamped on there finally got um, that auction bid for $50 here was a piece <clears throat> that uh, paid three dollars for at a thrift store was hoping that upon a further inspection I might discover that it was made of sterling silver but it, it wasn't it did however uh, incorporate lots of um, garnet, red, like a, that deep kind of customary red garnet color. Beautiful uh, bracelet, functional, um, not made of silver, but ornate, had this kind of cool looking cross piece here in the cla uh, on a double-sided clasp, which is also uh, a little bit uncommon. Uh, threw that up within a week, sold that for $28. Still selling these uh, sterling silver glass Murano type um, charm beads. Uh, bought these and a lot of a bunch of that other jewelry stuff we talked about earlier in the video. And several of these were sterling silver. I've sold maybe a dozen of them so far, all for between $9 and $11 a piece. And I still have probably 50 to 75 of them left. So it's going to be a slow burn. Sell one a week, one or two a week. And I'll keep doing that as long as I have because I've made my money back on that a long time ago. Here was another uh, very true to the description. This really was scrap gold. Um, I'm just selling it for the weight, a little over three grams of 14 karat. You're looking at the a old stick pin that had snapped off and what used to be a cameo had fallen out. So these are, you know, to put them back together, find another cameo on the right size, it just wasn't worth my time. Here's another uh, pendant where it had a really beautiful piece of agate in it originally had fallen out. And then the backs of a couple of earrings that had really nice pearls at one time, but one had fallen off. I just scrapped it all. This is still, still has value because it is solid gold. So $108 for just three grams. This was a really cool, um, I paid $50 for this and I kind of paid up because I knew that this was really going to sell well because it was unique. It is a pocket watch chain. It is sterling silver, and look at the really cool design on those links. It was quite heavy. It actually said uh, 925 and also 750, but 750 is the European hallmark for 18 karat gold. So I was thinking, well, what is 18 karat here? Is it the ring? Is it the chains? Is it this? I tested all three. They all tested for sterling silver. So there is nothing that's gold on this. I don't know what the 750 stamp was about, but I was happy to get $200 for it because I made $150 in profit. Here's one of these Craftsman brand ratchet wrenches, which uh, I probably bought a dozen different uh, sizes and brands at this antique uh, lot that I bought at an estate sale. Uh, the same with the hand planer that we saw earlier. Uh, these always sell between $14 and $20. It almost doesn't matter the age, the brand, or the size. That's roughly the area. So if I can find these for a dollar or two dollars at thrift stores uh, or, or places like that, yard sales, I buy them every time. They don't sell immediately. Sometimes it can take a month or two, but they almost always do sell in that range. 
Here was a really cool uh, large accordion. Now in this case, I was actually selling this for a friend of mine, so this money didn't come to me and I didn't spend any money on it. Um, he had it and he was like move into in a home and he was like, hey, would you, you, know, would you mind helping me? Because he knows that uh, I sell things. So uh, put it up, it was, I don't really know even the brand. It said concert on it, but it, uh, the case was in rough condition, but the, the um, you know, this accordion itself was so beautifully made, uh, really good condition, still worked really well. The bellows inside um, opened up really well. As you can see this here, let's see if I, yeah, kind of opened them up a little bit. Boy, it was quite loud as well. So somebody who knows how to play this is going to have a really good time because it was a really cool piece, uh, $300. I mean, if I now that I know that this is what they sell for, I would probably pay as much as $100 for one in good condition, knowing that I could probably achieve this type of a sale. This was a really cool uh, gold ring. Um, you can see here I put it in a nice little display box. Um, but what you're looking at is a 14 karat solid gold ring. It uh, features two diamonds and four uh, small pearls and with black enamel paint around it. And this is sort of a customary design for Georgian style jewelry, um, which predates um, the Victorian era. But a uh, really pretty piece, uh, fairly good uh, weight to it, uh, and I paid right around $140 for it at a consignment shop, which these consignment shops I go to, most of the time I'm getting costume jewelry. It just so happened they had a couple of nice pieces of fine jewelry, and uh, I paid uh, a good amount. I paid um, less than $300 for both pieces of, the, of gold, and this one sold. I made $200 profit on this, and that even will cover the cost of the other piece. So I'm already in a profit off this one, and when I sell the other piece, piece which happens to be a, a, a Victorian era stick pin with diamonds and sapphires, that will probably bring a good two to three hundred dollars as well. This was such a cool thing. This came out of a thrift store buyout. It was this little container. It's a uh, very uh, finely kind of car like etched. I mean, this is poured into a mold to be made, of course, but the original mold was quite. Um, intricate um, but what this is is it's like a little jewelry container that it comes off the top as a lid and you can see how bright on the inside this was um, not exactly sterling silver although I put that in the title it technically has to be 925 parts out of a thousand to be sterling this was only 900 uh, out of a thousand parts so very very close to being sterling silver and had a decent weight I mean, it was 286 grams so just like with sterling silver, you're usually getting about 75% of the gram weight in dollar value. So, you know, this is, um, so $143 would be 50% of the gram weight. Um, and I took a best offer of 175. So we were pretty close there. Uh, happy to get that because I had already made my money back from that whole buyout. And this was just, a, it took several months to sell it, but finally somebody was interested. This piece right here, uh, this is like a, a chess set. And uh, chess sets sell pretty well. I mean, hand-carved wooden pieces, pieces carved out of stone. Uh, and in this case, they were like solid brass. And they were quite heavy. Uh, this whole box weighed several pounds, probably five to six pounds. Um, but these pieces were really cool. Some were more of a dark copper color and the others were like a brighter brass color. Um, they came in their own box. They didn't fit in there perfectly. You had to kind of be careful. But um, I only paid $15 for this. It took about two months. Finally sold it for basically $100. This came in a recent small lot of costume jewelry. You find all kinds of other things in with costume jewelry. Sometimes cosmetic based products, sometimes thimbles, um, all kinds of stuff. But this was like a little hand mirror that had this little scene on it. Like people were outside and uh, someone was playing the violin, other people were having drinks and stuff. Uh, kind of a cool piece. Wasn't silver, but um, looked kind of like old sterling silver could look, like tarnished. Uh, it was a cool piece. Um, I didn't buy it individually. I'd already made my money back, so that was a $10 sale. Had this up for a while. This is a really cool uh, item. It's what they call a courier's knife or a tanner's knife. Um, and it uh, it's this large uh, device with a, a kind of this long wooden handle, solid piece of wood, and at the bottom, a straight piece. Inside here on both sides, on this side and on that side, are blades, long, thin blades, almost like razor blades, but, you know, 
eight inches long on both sides. It's held together and pressed by these um, several of these flathead screws. And that thing was, I mean, this is from the late 1800s, and this is, uh, it was still razor sharp. But what they'd do is they'd put, uh, like, a bench, and they'd put a piece of hide over that, and they'd take that device, and they'd hold it, and they'd push down, and they'd scrape. And that was apparently a tool that that particular type of worker would use when they were preparing a hide. Uh, I don't know, You can, this is not the kind of thing you can go out to Home Depot and, and buy today. Uh, I... I had never come across one in person. This came in that same antique uh, tool lot. It took me a long time to sell. Uh, I ended up taking a best offer actually of $75. So I was kind of disappointed. I would like to have made more just because to me, this was such a unique and cool looking tool, but clearly there was not high demand. Clearly uh, it's not the type of tool people are using a lot of these days. And so um, the demand was just not uh, there like I wanted it to be. I actually bought these from some friends locally who were looking to offload them, asked me, you know, I was like, I can you know, sell them for you, I can buy them from you, whatever you want to do. And I ended up paying $160. I just bought them from the friend. But you're looking at 10 different bowls, and this is Fire King, um, that, that brand. Um, they uh, have some other colors that are popular, like the, the mint green color they call jadeite. This was like a soft blue. I'd actually never come across this myself in person. Um, but, uh, you know, a week I sold it for $300. So I almost doubled my money. I helped out some friends to get them uh, get this out of their way and then made a little bit of money on it as well. The downside of this was that even though I packaged it super well when the buyer... Uh, got it. Two of the bowls were broken. So I ended up giving them, I think, about a $40 um, partial refund. So um, I didn't make, uh, I made more like a little over $100 profit off. I was still okay with that, but that's an example of the thing I don't often like to get or ship because it's so breakable. And in that case, it was just like, that's what I thought. I was like, I'll do my best, and it still got broken. So it's difficult in transit. A lot of those couriers, uh, they just don't handle this stuff very well. Um, this was a couple of you know, antique um, postcard albums. These are things that I had bought for resale. So I bought them with postcards in them like this. I removed the ones that I thought had standalone value uh, or sm ones I could put in small lots. And those have already been removed. <clears throat> And I think I paid about $100, a little over $100 for each of these originally. So I've pulled ones out um, that I'm going to resell, threw these back up, and somebody bought them. So I got all my money back, but not, not only, uh, so my investment is gone. This wasn't really a sale to make money. This was more recoup my investment. And then the, the probably 20 or 30 some postcards I pulled out of it that I sell, that's where I'm going to make my money. This is a really pretty necklace. Um, you're looking at a pendant with a natural uh, opal. It looks almost like it's got a fracture. It doesn't. That was just the way that I guess it formed. Uh, a cool piece. Lots of greens and kind of blues and purples. Not really much red in this one. Uh, but it was a 14 karat gold chain and the pendant was gold. And so it wasn't that hard. Uh, I got this in a jewelry lot. If I broke it all down, I probably paid maybe $10 for it. Uh, if you if you you know divide out what I paid for everything, and it sold for $125. This is the latest sale of my gold-filled glasses. Anytime I find these for, I think my 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 uh, purchasing point is most of the time no more than eight dollars. I will sometimes pay ten dollars for them. Um, if they're really unique looking or in really good condition, but because I know I'm usually going to sell them between 20 and $25 or so a piece, I don't like to even spend 10 because, uh, spending 10 to get 10, I, I, I like to do better than that usually. But, um, I got these three, one had a case, two didn't, these are gold filled. So, uh, just like some of the jewelry before it has a thin layer of gold on the outside of it. Um, I paid, uh, probably about $8, uh, for um, each of these. So, you know, $25, $27, something like that uh, in uh, on these, and I sold them for $72. Any find, anytime you can find these for a, a good $5 or something, it's a, it's a really good buy. Uh, I never have problems selling them. People collect, people use them for different things, or they'll harvest the gold. 
Well, thank you guys for showing up and being a part of this. I hope some of this helped you. Good luck with your uh, treasure hunting, and I hope you have some good sales soon as well, if that's something that you do. Make sure you check out the Rusty the Reseller channel, What's Sold, Postcard Planet, and the What's Sold YouTube channel podcast channel. Until next time, take care.